He is the maker of heaven and earth out there alone by himself. He made everything for himself. We thank him for sending the former prophets and apostles and giving them the message of truth. We thank him for the way of holiness that God left on record for all of us to be saved by and given us a chance to get our life right with God. You that are watching, again, we are dedicating our local temple here in Atlanta, Georgia, 52 Fairborn Road, Southwest Atlanta. You're welcome to come. Services is every, I believe, Wednesday and Friday, if I'm correct, yes, at 7 p.m. every Sunday morning at 11, every Sunday afternoon at 4.30. Mm -hmm. You stop in and be a part of the truth of the gospel Moreover, we are grateful for the brothers and sisters and their faithfulness and their dedication to the work of the Lord. Now you have your temple here. Be faithful. Amen. 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 Be faithful. You know, I travel the world and people always pulling on me to open up churches. Well, you have one now. You don't want to be a Sunday saint. You know, some folk go to work every day and work overtime. Mm -hmm. And they lay out of church, catch up with their ball game or the movie that they missed. But God wants you to be faithful. I know what it is to be faithful. If we were not faithful for these years, it wouldn't be a branch church opening up nowhere. In fact, we would never got out the basement. But our faithfulness and dedicated to the service of God is what calls us to labor from state to state, country to country, and obey the vision that God gave us. So if you want something from God, then you have to give God something from yourself. Now I want to remind everybody of the youth conference coming up uh, and as the secretary gave me this, they're asking for everybody to make reservations at the same hotel that's set aside for the convention because I believe the hotel is connected to the convention center, 3121 Westgate City Boulevard, that's Greensboro, North Carolina. To you that are watching, this is April 15th, 16th, and 17th of this year in Greensboro, North Carolina. Now, if you haven't left the church, you still have time. Leave it. Don't even look back at it. No, Lord. If you rub up against it, don't turn around and see what you rubbed up against. Stay away from the man-made churches. They will do you more harm than good. But remember, that's April 15th, through the 17th in Greensboro, North Carolina. The secretary is asking everyone to make your reservations and you can start making your reservations now if you like. 3121 Westgate City Boulevard. That's Greensboro, North Carolina. You be there, you preachers, you come. You preachers, you leave your churches too. Right. Amen. Amen. Leave your churches and turn your robe in. And uh, because you won't need it here. <laughs> you won't need your robe here at all. I think of when I was in falsehood, all us young ministers had robes. We couldn't wait to get robes. <laughs> and uh, I wanted the robe different from the others. So I got a robe. I had two crosses on each side, like what the priests wear. And uh, long robe, square collar, no white collar, just square collar. I had a matrix robe. And brother, 
When I put that thing on, I felt like I was Clark Kent. <laughs> then it wasn't for long, I got rid of it and threw it aside. My former minister would ask me, where's your role, Brother Gino? I said, well, I figure I don't need it. He said, why not? I said, well, I look at it from this perspective. When you die, you can't have it no way. So wearing the robe, the preaching have became a, in churches, almost a fashion statement. Until preachers will wear robes to match whatever the choir is wearing. Never mind the gospel. Just wear robes and that's where it is in false churches. Most young ministers can't wait. And when you see the preachers with all them stripes on his sleeve, that's supposed to be certifying that the different degrees he have now in his study in religious theology. And if you see three bars on each arm, that means he's a doctor of divinity. I don't care if you have bars all on your back. No man can tell the truth and say he's a doctor of divinity. That's right. Divinity means that which is divine. That's right. Nobody is a, a doctor of the divine life of God. That's right. Because the courses you have to take to understand the divineness of God is lifetime. That's right. You never graduate from it. Glory to God, you never can get a diploma from it. No. The knowledge of God is so deep, so broad, so high, until Prophet David declares such knowledge is too high for me. For me. He said, I can't attain it. Job evaluated God and said he's higher than heaven, deeper than hell. Broader than the sea and longer than the earth. God said, if I cut you off and shut you up, who can hinder me? So all men that say they are a doctor of divinity, you're liars. Because that means you have finished your course in God. And the only time you finish your course in God is when you die. But while you're in this life, you have to study. Show yourself approved. A workman unto God needeth not to be ashamed. That's right. Rightly divide, rightly explain, rightly interpret the word of truth. All right, to all of my viewers, I greet all of the brothers and sisters internationally around the world. We're glad for you. We want to update you on those that got baptized. Last night here in the dedication service, 34 was baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ. 19 in headquarters, 3 in Baltimore, 2 in Middletown, New York, 1 in Rocky Mount, 3 in Augusta, Georgia, 4 in Atlanta, 3 in Monroe, Louisiana, 5 in Houston, uh, two in Oklahoma, four in Chicago, one in Portland, two in Minnesota, one in Memphis. International baptisms, five in Johannesburg, 16 in the Bahamas, six in the Turkish, uh, Turks, Cocos Islands, seven in Sierra Leone, Africa, a total of 120 souls. So we thank God for that. All right. Let's get your books open. You Williams is patting on his Bible. The Lord must have told you something? Not the Lord, Pastor. Not the Lord. I won't say it's the Lord. You wouldn't say it's the Lord. I wouldn't say it's the Lord. So this is your own doing. But this is from the word, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you see, when I toss Adam, is it your own doing? He he pushed back. 
pushed back with Bible. All right, give me whatever you have so we can take it apart. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and we'll start reading in verse 1. You know, there's one uh, gentleman on social media, a white gentleman who's an antichrist. And someone sent him our broadcast. And I saw it for the first time before I came here. He said, for some strange reason, I like this Geno Jennings fella, but he seemed to be too much of a critic on how women should dress and how women should look because he's telling them to put clothes on. In other words, I'm messing up his vision. <laughs> That's right. He said, <laughs> he said, I'm too harsh and too brutal. And then he played the message of well, me and Williams, of course, uh, he's reading and preaching. He said, obviously, it's, he said, this is the best gimmick mm. I have ever seen in a religion. Mm. He said, obviously, them two rehearse mm. before they have church service. He said, that reader fella is this Geno Jennings hype man. And he said, I'm amazed how this man automatically know what Geno Jennings is going to read. How do he know? See, that goes to show you, yeah, you're an atheist because you don't know God. You don't know God. Yeah, you don't know God. That's right. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Williams and I never planned. I got uh, a life and he got one. That's right. And uh, I never know what I'm going to preach when I come up here in most time and he don't know. That's right. So when I tell him, go anywhere you want, that doesn't bother me because no, don't. the word of God is given to me to break down and take apart. That's right. So wherever he lands, I'm home. That's right. Amen. Wherever he lands. Wherever. We're never stuck. I'm just, I'm home. That's right. But uh, to you that think this is a gimmick, let me give you some background of this dynamic duel here. Amen. I was already baptized and had the Holy Ghost. Williams and I grew up together. You yeah. hear me often say he was a three God man. He hit when I said, but he was. Was, Pastor. Was. Was. Amen. Amen. Not now. Not now. Thank God for that. Amen. But uh, he had the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But he fought the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ bitterly. Amen. And uh, he would shake his hands in my face and tell me, Nikki, it doesn't matter whether you baptize or not. I know I'm saved. I said, all right. <laughs> Until one day that one conversation about the Godhead yeah. because he didn't believe it was one God and he didn't know who God was and didn't know how many it was. He didn't know God's name. He didn't know nothing about God at all. He just knew he had the Holy Ghost and he didn't know what that was. <laughs> yes, I'm telling That's you. Right. He had the Holy Ghost and he thought he was filled with the third person of the Godhead. That's right. That's right. He didn't know God at all. That's right. Amen. At his mercy. Amen. So when he and I talked on my mother's porch, I asked him, well, who, who's coming back for you? He said, the Lord is coming back for me. Yeah, he asked me, well, who's coming back for you? Mm -hmm. I said, Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ is coming back for me. Right. That shook him. That's right. So after that, he left off the porch and then later on we headed out by baptism and God opened his understanding and he went down the water in the name of Jesus Christ and came out to three God church and came in the false apostolic church I was in <laughs> what I was in was better than what he was in <laughs> because at least we had we knew how many gods it was <laughs> so as a child we both was kids growing up yeah I began every day we would meet at my house and he and I would go to the Bible. I'm talking about 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. Every day I was scolding him about Jesus Christ was God Almighty. That's right. And I would sit him down. In fact, I think you about what, three years older than me? About three. Yeah, about three years older than me. So I set down my elder. <laughs> Amen. Blind elder. <laughs> Had eyes but see nothing. <laughs> and I took my time and showed him from Old Testament to New how to establish and prove by Scripture 
Jesus Christ was God Almighty. Yes. Mm -hmm. From old, I'm talking about hours, hours. a day. We were laying the Bible three, four, five hours a day. That's right. So when I started pastoring and we was in the basement, God moved on me years later, I believe at Briar Road. He just came up for prayer and, and God moved on me. They lay hands on him because God gave me a quick understanding of scripture and how to navigate scripture. Right. And I laid hands on him and asked God and I remember what I asked God. I asked God to anoint him and give him in the scripture the same mind that you gave me. That's right. That wherever you guide me in the scripture, guide him there and give him a excellent memory yes. of the scripture. Now, while I was praying for him, and that's not what he came up for prayer for, but God led me to ask him and make that prayer. And later on, he admit that when I prayed, he didn't believe it. He didn't believe God was going to do nothing like that. No. And a fool would say, well, if he didn't believe it, then how could God answer such a thing? Because the Bible says, he that come to God must believe that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. That's right. That's right. But it wasn't he that was coming to God. That's right. I was coming to God. That's right. Amen. I was the one that came to God and, and then God answered my prayer quickly. That's right. So when you see him going places while we're preaching, it's never pre-planned. No. Atheists. No. It's never rehearsed. Oh, no. Atheists. He can go anywhere in the Bible. There have been times that he went the scriptures that he never read in his life. That's right. He didn't even know certain scriptures was in the Bible. Right. But the Holy Ghost guide him there. That's right. In other words, viewer, this is a Holy Ghost filled, sanctified program. That's right. We, we don't rehearse. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, we don't rehearse here. Not at all. Oh, no. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We don't rehearse here. No, no. This is a Holy Ghost filled anointed program. That's right. Amen. So, no, I don't pre plan. I don't care what chapter, what verse he gets. Nope. Sometimes when you hear me say, All right, did the Lord give you something? I'm just picking with him because I know God getting given. <laughs> That's I want to say, how you know? Because God said he will do nothing. Nothing. But reveal his secret to the servant, the prophets. That's right. And that's not him. That's not me. He's the scribe. That's it. God made us the prophet. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Amen. That's right. So this, this, is how, this is how it balances out with the Bible. So he and I never planned. No. Never planned. No. Never pre-planned at all. At all. Amen. But... It just falls on us by the Holy Ghost. That's right. All right, Williams, let's go to work and get busy and see how many fillers we can hurt, tear down, and then build them back up and put them back together. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and we start at verse 1. All right, follow now, me. Now we beseech you, brethren, by now, the... Now mm -hmm. we're calling your attention, brethren. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here you had the Apostle Paul. Give chapter and verse again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're at verse 1. The Apostle Paul, born in Tarsus, in the city of Cilicia, sat under the feet of Gamaliel, whom the scripture says was a doctor of the law. Yeah. He also was a Pharisee, meaning a believer of the resurrection right. at the spirit world. Yeah. Paul came out of the first tribe that gave Israel a king tribe of Benjamin, who was the youngest son of Jacob. That's right. Here the apostle Paul, of course, on his 
on the road to Damascus and the light shined from heaven and above the brightness of the sun knocked them down to the earth. Theology said it knocked him off his horse. Yeah. Bible never said he was riding one. No. Mm-hmm. That's right. He heard a voice from heaven saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He, was, he responded, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard. The bigger kick against the prick. He instructed him to go to the street that is called straight. There was a certain disciple. He never said it was a preacher. No. Not at all. No, no. Ananias was addressed as a certain disciple, and a certain was, follower. That's right. Listen at this. Acts chapter 9 and at verse 10. What is it? And there was a certain disciple at Damascus. There was a certain follower at Damascus. Named Ananias. Named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a to vision. To him. Said the Lord in the vision. Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Yes. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight. Why? And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. And? For behold, he prayeth. Wait a minute. He's what? He prayeth. Now, he's doing something that he didn't used to do. So Brother Saul was baptized by this certain disciple. That's right. Fell from his eyes as it were scales. He received the Holy Ghost and the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and preached by God's permission, Jesus was the Christ. That's right. Now you have Brother Paul and Thessalonica preaching to the, them that's the Thessalonian church. That's right. Calling their attention to the intelligence of God the thinking of God, the foundations of God. That's Give right. chapter and verse again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and we're at verse 1. What is it? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That what? And by our gathering together unto him. Uh -huh. That ye be not soon shaken in mind. Don't be so soon shaken in mind, nor... Or be troubled. Why? Neither by spirit... Nor by spirit... Nor by word... Nor by word... Nor by letter nor as by from us... Nor by letter as, as from, us, from us... As that the day of Christ is at hand. Do you hear this? Amen. Let's take this apart now. Amen. First, he's admonishing them. That's right. Warning them. We beseech you, brethren. I beseech you, brethren. Meaning, I am calling your attention. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Letting Christ. Letting the church know Jesus is getting closer. That's and it. that was thousands of years when that was written. That's right. He's closer now than he was then. Amen. And we're calling your attention by that same spirit. That's right. That was in Brother Paul. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That same spirit, same not another. Spirit. Same spirit. Same spirit that was in Paul is in me now. That's right. Hallelujah. Who do you think you are? Well, I don't think I am nobody, <laughs> but I am telling you. Telling you. The same spirit that was in Paul. That's right. Is in Pastor Jennings. <laughs> That's right. You can call it arrogant. You can call it pride. I don't care what you think. Amen. I can tell the world Amen. that. Hallelujah. The same spirit. That's right. That called and sent the Apostle Paul. That's right. Was that same spirit that called me by name. We having the same spirit. Do you hear this? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and at verse 13. The word of God said. We having the same spirit. We have the same spirit of, of faith, what? Of faith. Of what? Of faith. All belief and mind belief is the same. Same. That's right. There ain't no two different beliefs here. No, no. Glory to God, you got to have the same belief that the apostles had, who had the same belief that Jesus had. That's right. So I'm moved by that same spirit. That's right. To tell the world, including all the governments of the world. That's right. I don't care nothing about your authority, your position, whether you're a king or a prince or a governor or a mayor. Yeah. Whether you're rich or poor, bond or free, black or white. That's right. Whether you are an atheist or a so-called believer. That's right. God have one message. That's right. For everybody to follow. Amen. And regardless of how rich you are, one thing you got in common with the poor is the grave. That's it. Are you getting me? That's right. 
Listen at this now. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That what? And by our gathering together unto him. We are gathering. 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 This together. is the gathering now. That's right. We are gathering together unto him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind. Hold it right there. Amen. What is the Apostle Paul telling the church? Yeah. Be stable. That's right. Be sound. That's right. Be solid. Be steadfast. Yeah. Be firm. That's right. Notice what he points out first. The that, first thing that's quick to move in a person. That you be not soon shaken in mind. Because when you are, what happened? Or be troubled. Hold it. Mm. Trouble. Amen. Go ahead, brother. You take an earthquake. Yeah. When the earth shifts. Everything is in trouble. That's right. The foundation of our mind, the foundation of our being yeah. is our mind. When the mind fall apart, the emotions fall apart. That's right. When the emotions fall apart, your physical body, the temple, the tabernacle is affected. Right. When that fall apart, now you're in a spiritual slump. That's right. Chain reaction take place. That's right. So when you are soon, soon shaken. Shaken in mind. Notice what he says. That you be not soon wait, shaken. Wait, 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 wait. He didn't just say not to be shaken. No. He said what? That you be not soon shaken. Amen. You see, a lot of us are shaken, spiritually dismantled yeah. too fast. That's right. What brings about being dismantled so fast? You didn't wait to get settled in God. That's right. You didn't wait and do what Jesus said. Learn of me. Learn of me. When you learn of him, the lessons of God will extend your roots in him. That's right. Why? Because we are plants. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just like a natural plant, blessed be the name of God, must be watered, yeah. nurtured. Then the elements of the sun, the power of the sun, quickens the plant and strengthens the plant. And when the plant, the higher it get up top, yes. something is getting deeper in the bottom. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. If you see that plant, you see the plant must experience the resurrection. That's right. But first it got to die. Die. And when it died, then God come quicken it. That's right. Before you are elevated, transformed, you got to start dying. That's right. And while you're dying, you must go through a quickening process. That's right. You know, a lot of us now being quickened down to the movement of the body. You can be quickened and your body don't budge. That's right. That's right. First thing that is quickened on the human family mm -hmm. is your ear. That's right. Your ear got to be quickened first. Yeah. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, when they heard this, this, when they heard this, then they were pricked, pricked. in the heart. But first, heard it. They got to hear this. That's right. And then when the ear is quickened, the next thing is quickened is the mind. That's right. Because the mind starts to think and reflect on what the ear have heard. The third thing that's quickened is the heart. That's right. Because the heart becomes emotionally attached to what the ears have heard and what the mind is now thinking. That's right. Fourth thing that's quickened is the body. Go ahead. For now the body responds whether through rebellion yeah. or obedience. That's right. What the ears have heard and what the mind have thought and what the heart have felt. That's right. It takes all of that to take place before man and woman can welcome God. That's right. When you welcome God, you welcome God by submitting 
to the letter. That's right. To the language of God, which is the spirit of God. For the Bible said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Listen. That you be not soon shaken in mind. Don't be so soon shaken. Don't allow yourself to be so quick mentally disturbed. That's right. That's right. When your mind is easily to be removed, you won't be around in God long. No, you won't. So when you pray and ask God, make it strong. Ask God to strengthen mind, yes. heart, right. body, right. spirit. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hear, hear this. Second, First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20. Yeah, chapter and verse again. I want to take my time and atomize this. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. The very. And the very God of peace. Hold it right there. You had the Prince of Peace. Yeah. And you got the title God of Peace. God of Peace. All right. You got King of Peace. Mm -hmm. Prince of Peace. That's right. A prince is lesser than a king. That's right. And you hear the prince declare, My father yeah, is greater, is greater than, I. than I. Than I. But the Son of Man got the title Peace from the Spirit. That's right. Because he said, I come. That's right. In my father's name. Go ahead. So when the spirit manifests itself in the flesh, the flesh inherited all the titles. That's right. That the spirit was holy. That's right. Until the flesh said, everything that the father has mine. Are mine. Mine. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Glory to God. What did he say? And the very God of peace. The very spirit of peace. So therefore you cannot. Blame confusion on God. No. He's the God of peace. God of peace. And not the author or the originator of, of confusion. confusion. That's right. Uh -huh. And the very God of peace sanctify you. Holy. Set you apart. Holy. Holy. Amen. For what? And I pray God your whole spirit. Wait a minute. This goes back to what I said. Mind, soul, body, and spirit. Right. The very God of peace set you aside, set you apart, sanctify you holy. And I, now, mm -hmm. now, now let's hear the apostle mm -hmm. itemize right. what has to be holy. And I pray God your whole spirit. Wait a minute. Your whole spirit. Your whole spirit. In other words, all of the spirit that's in you. Right. In other words, your will. That's right. That's it. God wants to control it. That's right. You see, you got three wills in man. That's right. I want to say what? Yes. God will. The devil will. And self will. That's right. God will. The devil will. And self will. That's right. Two wills are one. The devil and man. Oh, yes. They won. They won. God come to bring conflict. That's right. Disagreement, debate. Yes. Between man and the devil. That's right. Because man was made for God's glory. Yeah. And God want to pull man back to his original place. That's right. Uprightness. Upright. Holy. Yeah. The full reflection of the characteristics of God. That's right. Amen. The scripture says God made man in his image. Yes. That's not narrowed down just to his shape, his form and fashion. No. But that also gets man character. That's right. The characteristics of Adam, he had the characteristics of God. That's right. And he fell the moment he ate of the fruit. Death was introduced. That's right. <laughs> Adam became the living dead. That's right. For the Lord said, the day you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. And yet he didn't physically die until he was 930. That's right. But he said, the day you eat thereof, That's right. you're going to die. You're gonna die. The day that Adam ate the fruit, death hit the Garden of Eden. That's right. What do you mean? Sin 
came into the world. As by one man. As, listen at this. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Is what? Wherefore as by one man. How many? As by one man. What happened? What sin, did this one man do? Sin entered into the world. And what was that sin? And death. And what? Death. And what? And death. What did it do? By sin. And so death passed upon all men. Why? For that all have sinned. Nevertheless. Death reigned from Adam unto Moses. And even though with them that had not sinned. After the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who was what? Who was the figure of him that was to come. You see, Adam was the figure of the son of man that was to come. Was to come. So Adam's fall represent the birth. Of everything that will come after him. That's right. Everything that will come from the womb of the woman will come out the womb a fallen child. That's right. In sin. That's right. Full of iniquity. Full of iniquity. Having the nature of a murderer, hmm. nature of a liar, That's right. nature of a sinner. That's all right. that was all in his nature. That's right. That's why before he act out, what was laying in his nature, mm -hmm. he would need a new nature. And were by nature the children of wrath. What? And were by nature the children no, of wrath. Don't say, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. I never murdered nobody. Mm -hmm. I never killed nobody. That's fine. That's fine. That doesn't change the fact it was in your nature. That's right. Give chapter and verse. In Ephesians chapter 2 and at verse 3. Pastor Jennings, I ain't never disrespect my mother, but it was in your nature. That's right. Because the Bible says. And were by nature. Here, 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 here. Amen. That's something. But by nature. And were by nature. By nature. The children of wrath. You were the children of wrath. Even, by nature. That's right. Children of disobedience. Children. children of stubbornness. That's right. Children of being in prison. The spirit that now worketh. The spirit that's now operating. In the children of disobedience. All right. All right. Amen. So whether you act out. Certain wrongs or not. Or not. The possibilities was there. That's right. In your nature. That's right. That's why God established a new birth to pull you from that nature. That's right. And to transform your nature. That's right. Don't say it, but my mother and father was saved before I was born. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. But they wasn't always saved. No. That nature of the devil was in them. That's right. That's like the nature of the devil is in you now. Right. And you That's need right. a new nature. That's right. It's got to be born all over again. That's right. And if you take note, the elements of the new birth have the same title of what a person have when they're in the womb of their mother. Their mother. The Bible says this is he mm -hmm. that, that came, came by, by water, water and blood. blood. Not by, Not water, by only, water only. But by water but and by blood. by water and blood. And, and if you look at a child, that child is formed in water and blood. That's right. Within the body of the woman is water, blood, and spirit. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Amen. Within the woman is water, blood, and spirit. Spirit. And spirit. What is the spirit? Her breath. Yes. What is the water? That sack of water where the child is in. That's right. What is the blood? The blood that's running through her veins because the life of all flesh lies in the blood. In the blood. Wonderful. Now here you got in order to get into God's woman, which is a body yes. that stays pregnant. That's right. Over there, God, I said God church stays pregnant. Right. Bible says he add daily. Daily. So that should be saved. But in order for lawful pregnancy to take place in God's woman, you got to have seed. And in order for the seed to be discharged, you got to have a preacher who's aroused. That's right. By the spirit. That's right. So the word can be discharged. That's right. Are you getting me? Wonderful. That's why babies keep coming. Yeah. Being baptized all around the world. That's right. Seed is dropping. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Amen. Seed is dropping. That's right. Amen. That's right. But if the seed, now you got preachers. Uh -huh. Who's up preaching? Like in the natural, there's some men, their seed is dead. <laughs> That's right. 
Amen. That's right. They just, they, they, they just don't have what it takes to yeah. get her pregnant. So he got to turn to God. Yeah. And ask God to help him. That's right. Well, you have a woman that can have a miscarrying womb and a dry breast. Right. You better give me that now. Yeah. Yeah. Being at the church has the title female, wife, bride. That's right. <laughs> there has to be consistency with preacher and church. That's right. That's right. In order for the church to grow. Let's skip this now quickly. In the, in the book of Hosea, chapter 9 and verse 14. That's what? Give them, O Lord. Give them, O Lord. What wilt thou give? What will you give? Them? Give them a miscarrying womb. And what? And dry breast. Hold it! Miscarrying womb. The churches today are miscarrying Mis wounds. That's right. The churches today are dry, dry breasts. breasts. Dry breasts. Give him the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Doctrine. That's right. And then give him the book of Peter. Yes. Sends him milk. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, and we're at verse 9. I got to balance out where this milk comes from. Balance it out. Huh? Isaiah, chapter 28, and verse 9. I'm working on the definition of dried breast. Dried now, breast. in order for a child to be properly nourished, oh, yeah. mama got to eat right. Oh, yeah. Don't be smoking, don't be drinking, don't be out there partying. You start raising your child before it comes from your womb. That's right. You start raising your child while you're still carrying it because your raising the child is based upon the conduct of your own temple. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Now listen at this. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. What is it? Whom shall he teach knowledge? Wait a minute. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Shall he teach, feed knowledge to? And whom shall he and make to understand shall doctrine? You make understand doctrine. There's two elements here. Right. Knowledge, doctrine. Doctrine. How is it coming, Williams? Them that are weaned from the milk. Wait, wait a minute. How is it coming? Them that are weaned from the milk. Where's knowledge and doctrine coming from? Them that are weaned from the milk. Where whom? is it coming from? Whom shall Them that are drawn. From, from the, the breast. breast. From the breast. Amen. Knowledge That's right. and doctrine right. come as milk. That's right. But it is drawn from the breast. From the breast. From Hold the breast. it. Right. Now give me the Apostle Peter. Now in the book of First Peter, chapter 2. I'm talking about the church right. and what's got to be in the church. That's right. And I want to show you why church people are spiritually dying. Right. That's right. That's right. Get this now. First Peter chapter 2 and we're at verse 2. Listen to me good. First Peter chapter 2 and at verse 2. Follow me. As newborn babes. Hold it. As. As, yes. as beginners. That's right. As novices. That's right. As them that just got started. That's right. He said as. So as. He's, he, he's comparing yes. your introduction to your walk to God yes. to a child that just came in the world. That's right. And this is how you got to be handled now. That's right. As newborn, newborn babes, babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So here you have the Old Testament prophet. Right. Look at the breast. That's right. And call it dry. dry that's right. He called it dry. Back in the book of Hosea 9 and verse 14. Said what? Give them, O Lord, what wilt thou give? Uh, give them a miscarrying womb and dry breast. Now, the false churches are murderous. That's right. That's right. Spiritual abortionists. That's right. Robbing you yes. of your chance to live a godly life. That's right. Being robbed. Being robbed. And the one that's performing yeah. all of these abortions oh, yes. is the preacher. That's right. That's right. What he's shoving in you is destroying your walk with God. That's right. So therefore, his lies dismantle you spiritually. Amen. Robbing you of your chance to cry. 
robbing you of your chance to walk. That's right. Robbing you of your chance to pray. Yeah. Robbing you of your chance to obey God. That's right. He's a spiritual abortionist. Yes. Dismantling and committing mass murder yeah. around the world. That's right. Not only that, the church is called bride. So if they got a church or religious group yeah. and the breasts don't have milk, dry breasts, then the breast is dry. dry. So therefore the people cannot be nourished and they are undernourished. Therefore they're suffering from spiritual malnutrition. That's right. Look at what comes from the breast, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 28, still at verse 9. Tell you what. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Hold it. Knowledge. Knowledge supposed to be there. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? You're supposed to teach knowledge. That's right. And then after you break down the gospel with the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. now that knowledge will acquaint you with doctrine. That's right. How is it coming? Them that are weaned from the milk. Hold it right there. When that woman eat chicken, collard greens, turnip greens, beets, sweet potatoes, amen, amen, llama beans, black eyed peas, fish, turkey. The chemicals in her body break down all that food. Right. So now that food is broken down and the mother breastfeed her child and the child is drinking what the mother ate. That's right. So the mother was being nourished by digesting a solid. The child was being nourished by digesting the liquid. That's right. Because the solid was converted to a liquid yes. because her body broke it down. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Here you have scripture. Solid, firm, sound. So it must be broken down by the divine nature of God. That's right. That you may be weaned from milk. From the milk. Now, whole milk. Give me Hebrews. Let's establish who milk is for. Now in Hebrews chapter 5 and we're at verse 12. All right. For it went for the time. He ought went to be teachers. for the time. He ought to be teachers. To be teachers. You have need that Ye one have teach you need again. That one teach you all over again. Which be the first principles Which of the be oracles the of God. Which the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need Wait of milk. Minute. You become such. That's right. You as become have, such. As have need of that milk. need milk. And not of strong meat. You ain't ready for strong meat. Why? Well, everyone that useth milk. Do you hear this? Everyone that useth milk. Everybody. Right. That use milk is, is, is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Why? For he is a babe. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. So then, Amen. you just come into the knowledge of the truth. Don't go out there and try to explain this to nobody. Don't go out and try to witness to nobody. Don't go out no. and try to debate nobody. That's right. Don't go out and try to prove nobody else is wrong. That's right. Don't even argue with your family. That's right. Why? Everyone you hold it. You're just a babe. Yes. So if the Bible compared you to a babe, a baby don't come from the womb talking. No. So if you're a babe in Christ, why do you got so much to say? That's right. No baby is born doing a lot of talking. No. They don't even walk. That's right. They just keep eating. They just keep eating and be carried. That's it. When you just come to the knowledge of the way of God, don't have so much to say. Don't be trying to straighten a bunch of people out. Just eat. Eat. Wonderful. Just eat. That's it. And when you eat, then grow and digest knowledge. And doctrine. Right. Knowledge and doctrine is broken down like milk. Yes, sir. What do you mean? 
you have to explain it. Keep explaining it. Breaking down. And when you keep mixing scripture, it breaks down. Break down. Because meat's for the belly. And belly for the meat. And you got to grind that scripture down so the babe can digest the meat. That's right. Now, them that been walking with God a long time, they can chew on solid scripture. That's right. I got to take that same scripture and break it down to the babe. So I have to take that scripture through other scriptural process yes. by making the prophets and the apostles harmonize. That's right. And now that beginner can say, wow, I understand. Right. Right along with the one that's been walking with God long term and say, yeah, I knew that was coming. That's right. Are you getting me? For everyone that uses milk is what? Is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Why? For he is a babe. Who is sound doctrine for? But strong meat belongs. Wait, wait, wait. Strong, strong meat. Strong, strong. strong. All meat. That's right. It's not strong. That's true. You know, there's some meat. It's very tough. Right. But it lay in your system a long time. That's true. Chew it. Until your jaw hurt. <laughs> That's right. Strong meat. Strong. You see, this gospel, we don't use tenderizer. <laughs> we don't use no gospel tenderizer. Oh, no. No meat tenderizer. That's right. But for the beginner, we take that meat through biblical processing. That's right. Break it down, take it apart. Reduce it to the lowest common denominator so the child can also digest That's right. the solid in the form of liquid. That's right. Get this down. Listen. But strong meat, strong meat belongeth to them that are of full That's for them that have been around for a while. Even those, Even by those that use, have the reasonable, have, uh, by reason of use, by reason of use, have their senses have exercised. Their senses exercised. To discern That's both the purpose of strong meat. Right. So your senses can be exercised. Exercise. So your sight can get better. Mm -hmm. I have to take that apart, William. Go ahead, brother. All right. All right. The Holy Ghost said. Who by reason of use have this Wait, 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 wait. Who by reason of what? Who by reason of use. Hold it. You got to use the milk and use the strong meat. And by reasonable use, you got to apply it to yourself. That's right. That it may exercise your senses. That's right. So you don't sin with the senses of the body. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. All right now. Go ahead. Strong meat. Strong meat. Will discipline my eyes. That's right. It'll give me a single eye. That's right. Strong meat will discipline my hands. That's right. So I don't touch not. Strong meat will govern my mouth. Yeah. So that which don't belong in it don't enter in. That's right. Strong meat Strong discipline my hearing. Yeah. So I only want to hear. Glory to God, the things of God. That's right. By reasonable By reason use, of use. Have your senses exercise. Exercise. Being in your physical body, your temper must have a Holy Ghost workout. <laughs> Exercise. Exercise. You must have a spiritual workout by working out your salvation That's right. with fear and trembling. Work out. You got to exercise your senses. Exercise your senses. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But strong meat. Strong meat. Belongeth to them that are of full age. Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Yes, yes. yes. Firm preaching. Wonderful. Belong to them that have been walking with God for a while. That's right. Even, Even those who by reason by of use. Reasonable use. Have their senses exercised. You see, in falsehood, you don't get a chance to exercise your senses no. properly. That's right. In fact, falsehood make you use your senses in a manner you shouldn't use. That's right. Let me give you an example. The word of God declare, say amen. To the truth. But when you're in falsehood and you're not getting doctrine and knowledge from the breast that's full of milk, you're going to say amen to a lie. So therefore your mouth 
has not been exercised to witness to what God have in scripture. That's right. That's why you need knowledge and doctrine. And doctrine. Weaned from the milk. Wait a minute. From what? Weaned from the milk. And how do we get it? And drawn from the breast. The church must be full of milk. That's right. Full of it. A dry breast church is a church that don't have the wisdom of God. That's right. Did you hear what I said? A dry breast church leave a congregation of starving, malnourished followers. That's right. Now, you take a child that's not being properly fed, it's crying, it's making noise. Oh, yeah. But that don't mean it's satisfied. That's right. It's making noise, it's hollering, it's screaming, but it's not being nourished. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord. That's where it's done in their false churches. That's right. They're hollering, they're running around the church, they're yelling and screaming, going off in some tongue, but spiritually they're malnourished. That's, they have been there. The purpose of the nourishment of God is that it will build you up so you can have an inheritance among them that are sanctified and the inheritance is new Jerusalem. That's Amen. right. Amen. You have to inherit that. Inherit it. What did he say? In the book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 7. Says what? They have dealt treacherously against the Lord. They have dealt treacherously. Against the Lord. Against God. For they have begotten strange children. Wait a minute. What's in the false churches? Strange children. Gay pastors. Mm. Strange children. <laughs> what is it? Strange children. Women preachers. Strange children. Deaconess. Strange children. Drunken bishop. Strange children. Long haired elders. Strange children. Preachers that baptize your Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Strange children. Folks that say they got the Holy Ghost and ain't never spoken to them. Strange children. Women that pray and prophesy with their head uncovered. Strange children. Preachers wife run the church. Strange children. Choir do dancing like the world. Strange children. So-called praise dancers, which is nothing but club steps. Strange children. Strange. Amen. Amen. But did the Holy Ghost say that? For they have begotten strange children. They have begotten. Yes. Strange. Strange children. Children. That's right. Eh? Now shall a moth devour them with their portion. Now what? Now shall a moth. Shall what? Now shall a moth. A moth. A moth. A moth. Devour them with their portions. Here you got an extra amount of time. That's, that's it. And when that time run out. That's right. You're going to be devoured. Devoured. All right, let's go back to the foundation of the book of Thessalonians. Everybody all right? Amen. I hope you can get this. Back in 2 Thessalonians. Amen. I, I want to break the meat down to give you good milk. Yes. One thing I say about the truth of God, the breast is plump here. Oh, yes. Full of milk. Full of milk. Everybody can latch on to it. <laughs> latch right. on to it and drink, drink, drink and get a belly full. That's right. Amen. That's right. Why the milk of God fills his bride. That's right. Fill her up so with right. wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and it's different from the milk of the world. That ye may suck. Listen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 11. Says what? That ye may that suck. That ye may suck. And be satisfied. And be satisfied. With the breasts of her consolations. With what? With the breasts of her consolations. That ye may milk out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, they think I'm making this stuff up, you know. <laughs> That's right. That you may do it. That ye may milk out. Milk out. And be delighted. And be delighted. With the abundance of her glory. With the abundance. Of her glory. Of her glory. Hallelujah. Go and take off. We are delighted. With the abundance. Of the glory that's in the church. What is the glory? The manifestation of God. Milk out. Milk out, but it don't run out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Milk out, but it never run out. What you mean, milk out? There's a thorough supply constantly. Constantly, 
constantly. Why? As newborn bears desire, the sincere the sin milk, milk of the word. Of what? Of the word. Of what? Of the word. What is the milk of God? The wisdom of God. So God's milk is eternal. That, that's right. Look it up. That's right. Never in the supply. Never. That's right. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. What did the Holy Ghost advise us to do? That ye may suck and be satisfied. John, give Williams and I some more juice, John. Amen. The Holy Ghost says what? That ye may suck and be satisfied. Now. Hallelujah. Knowledge Glory. and doctrine. Hallelujah. Doctrine hallelujah. mean rules hallelujah. and regulations. Hallelujah. How to govern. Are you getting me? A mother teach her child. Is giving the child knowledge. And is establishing doctrine. That's right. What do you mean? It's giving the child knowledge. How to drink. Because the child don't know when to stop. That's true. That child will keep going to the choke, <laughs> start right. coughing, and still try to drink. That's right. But the mother got to take the breast out the mouth. Yeah. That's right. So it's teaching the child knowledge and also laying doctrine. That's right. Rules, discipline, yeah. when to do, when not to do. That's right. Within the doctrine of God, the knowledge of God lies. Yes. Give us rules, regulations. How to do, what not to do. That's right. So we have to drink, and some of us drink too fast. That's right. That's why we choke, and what come out of us shouldn't have been in us. That's right. All right. That's true. We talk too much, too fast about subjects that we don't have knowledge of and didn't wait to learn them first. That's right. It's like a brother who just began ministry. Why are you in the book of Revelation? That's great. Why? Why are you in the book of Daniel trying to break down the oblation? Why are you in the book of Ezekiel trying to break down the will in the midst of a will? You may end up like the nation of Islam who said that's a spaceship that Elijah Muhammad is on called Jesus. My Lord, my Lord. Hmm? Just stick with, see that's strong meat. Strong meat. Just stick with milk. That's right. Take your time and drink that. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32 and verse 7. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32 and verse 7. Speak, young man. Speak, young man. If there be need of thee. If. Wait, 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 wait. Amen. Speak when you're not spoken to. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Speak, young man, if. If there be need of Notice thee. Notice the point out. It didn't just say speak man. No, young man. That means the novice. That's the right. babe. The beginner. That's right. And that's what you have in the churches all around the world. Men jumped up. God called and sent me to preach the gospel. Jumped and got a few people. It ain't nothing but a, a little tender plant. That's right. Can't write you divide the scripture. Leading everybody wrong. Wrong. Leading them to hell. That's right. With the name Jesus in their mouth. That's right. Speak. Young man. Young man. If there be if need of thee. It's necessary. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Scarcely when you're twice asked. Even if you're asked twice to speak. Mm -hmm. Don't be anxious to respond then. That's right. Uh -huh. Let thy speech be short. Let, wait a minute. <laughs> Amen. That what? Let thy speech be short. That's why when a brother start off ministering, I uh, give him a time limit. That's right. Yeah. I don't want him up there too long. That's right. Because if he get up there too long, guaranteed he's going to tell a lie. <laughs> That's right. Go on, say what? Yes, because he's going to get so anxious and so excited, and the people going to be out there, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He's he going to get caught up caught in up. a hoopla, and something going to come out of his mouth That's that right. shouldn't come out. That's right. Let thy speech be short. Fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes. Amen. Keep thine foot Amen. when you go to the house of God. And be more, and be more ready, ready to hear than to give the sacrifice than of they give the sacrifice of food. For they consider not that they do evil. What is that? Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Don't be in the heaven and start talking. For God, Tell us why. For God is in heaven. And where are we? Thou upon earth. Therefore, how let, should we talk? Therefore, let thy words be few. Yes. All right. Amen. Amen. Now, one thing I say when I was in falsehood from a bishop that I was under as a child, 
He had a good method. I didn't agree with it when I was a child, but as I got older, even I respected it. I respect it and uh, I respect it to this day. Amen. He had some young ministers and I was the youngest one, of course. And before he would let any of, the, of us ministers speak, he would tell the entire church. He said, all right, these ministers up here say they got the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He said, the Bible said the Holy Ghost is fire. He said, then all of you out there, shut up. Don't say amen. Don't say nothing. Let him drum up his own fire. <laughs> Amen. He said, he said, it's easy for a man to preach and everybody out there yelling, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go He get a, it's like a wave when someone surf. Yeah. But an experienced surfer, he laid lay the surfboard down and then lay on it and paddle. That's right. And wait for the wave. That's right. And then when that wave come, he get up under him he slowly yeah. stand up. Wonderful. He just don't jump out on the way. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Wonderful. So when someone just gets started ministry, yeah. just be quiet and listen. That's right. Listen. Listen. Because if a minister can't minister without a bunch of go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, he's handicapped. That's right. That's right. Because he becomes incompetent and unfit to sin elsewhere. Yeah. He may go to a place where nobody say nothing. That's true. But he's so used to go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Hoorah. Uh -huh. That's right. Years ago on Briar Road before we got to Frankfurt, there was a preacher we invited to come from, I think, Newport News, Virginia, no, Portsmouth. His name was Elder Townsend. Mm -hmm. Years ago. Yes, we wasn't even on Frankfurt Avenue yet. That's right. Townsend used to be under Bishop Hunter. I don't know whether he's still living or not, but I taught the congregation, whenever a guest minister come, listen at him. That's right. Before you quick yell, amen, 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 first listen. And then know what you're saying, amen, too. Right. Townsend came, and place was packed. Folks was quiet listening. He wasn't used to that. He got angry with the entire church. He said, folks, I feel hatred in here. <laughs> That's right. He said, I feel hatred. That's right. So I yelling at the church. I was sitting in the pulpit. I just told the saints. <laughs> amen. He wasn't used to preaching under those conditions right. of people listening. Right. He kept yelling. He charged himself to rebuking the church. I said, I feel hatred. I feel hatred. But the folk was listening. That's right. Because if you always saying, amen, amen, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yelling louder than the preacher, how do you know what he's saying? Right. First, listen. Listen. Then learn. That's right. Take your time and drink. That's right. So your soul can be spiritually fat mm. with the wisdom of God. That's right. And when the Holy Ghost fall, you'll start yelling in time enough. Yeah. A man just get up and he ain't said nothing. That's right, go ahead. Amen. That's right. <laughs> he just said, greetings, everybody. All right, greetings. All right, that's right. All right. He ain't said nothing yet. That's right. Some of our brothers are repetitious in habits that they got to break. Right. Even some that minister, they always ask the folk, ain't that right? Ain't that right? Ain't that right? Ain't that right? No, first say something. That's right. Say something. That's right. Amen. 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 Shut up. Say something. That's right. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. No, 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 no. Say something. That's right. You give me something to say amen to. Right. Amen. We want ministers that are spiritual craftsmen. Wonderful. Wonderful. 
that know how to use the axe, the hammer, and the sword of the scriptures to analyze and break down the speech of God. That's right. Not parrots. Parrots don't mean nothing. No. They just repeat us. That's right. You have to be able to analyze and explain scriptures, and what you can't explain, don't touch. Right. If you're able to explain the first sentence and not the second, leave the second and the third alone. That's right. The Bible says they shall proceed no further. No further. Let thy speech be short. What? Let thy speech. Here, 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 chapter and verse. Back in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32 and verse 8. Let thy speech be short. Be short. Comprehending much in few words. Understand a whole lot in few words. And, and distribute that understanding how? In few words. That's right. That's something. It's easy to teach faith. Believe God. Yeah. Trust God. But do you know God to teach about Him? That's right. That's right. Teaching what comes from Him or what is of Him, faith, believe, good. But God is the foundation of faith. That's right. Who is it? Who is it? What is it? Yeah. Holy Ghost said he comes from teeming. Right. Out of his hands come forth the arrows. And from his mouth come of a two-edged sword. That's right. The prophet said he walk among the curses of heaven yeah. and ride on the wings of the wind. Bible said nobody has seen God at any time. And Moses said, I saw. That's right. You got to be able to go between those hard scriptures. Yeah. No man has seen God at any time. And Jacob said, I saw him face to face. And my life is preserved. Right. That's right. Bible said, no man has seen God at any time. And Micaiah said, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. Sitting on his throne. That's right. With the host of heaven on the left side and on the right side. Right. And the spirit came unto him. Yeah. But yet the Bible said, no man have seen God. That's right. At any time, Isaiah said, Isaiah, the son of Amon, when the time of King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord and his train filled the temple. Yet the Bible said, no man have seen God at any time. So when you analyze it, look at the word man. What kind of man That's right. didn't see God? That's right. And then look at the word see. And understand that seeing is just not with your eyes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Paul said, make all men what? See. That means make you understand. That's right. A blind man may not see naturally, but he can see spiritually and comprehend the things of God. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 Do you get what I'm telling you? Amen. There was a prophet in the Bible, naturally blind, eyes fixated from age in the book of Kings. And there was a king wife coming to his house because the child fell ill and the Bible says how the woman foreign herself meaning she disguised herself so the prophet wouldn't know who the king wife was but when she came here his God stepped in and told the prophet the king wife is coming to see you but she have foreign herself yet the prophet was a blind man I heard it, I heard many preachers preach and say ain't no man of God can preach or healing or pray for you for healing if he's sick himself ain't no Bible say that ain't no Bible say that at all as the apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh, but yet same Paul uh, gave out blessed aprons and uh, handkerchiefs, and them that had disease was healed of them. Healed but yet he had a thorn in the flesh. In the book of 1 Kings 14 and verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 14, we get that verse 1 quickly. At that time, Abijah the son of Jeroboam. Abijah. 
the son of Jeroboam, of Jeroboam fell sick. Fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray uh -huh. thee, and disguise thyself. Disguise yourself. That thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam. I don't want no one to know that you're my wife. And get thee to Shiloh, behold. Go to Shiloh. There is a, a hydra the prophet. There's a hydra the prophet. The prophet. Which told me that I should be king over this people. Yes. And take with thee ten loaves and crack nails and a cruise of honey. Take some gifts with you. And go to him, he shall tell thee what shall become of the child. All right. And Jeroboam. Jeroboam's wife did so and arose and went to Shiloh uh -huh. and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see. Wait, wait a minute. Amen. Ahijah could not see. Why, William? For his eyes were set by reason of his age. Because of his age, his eyes were set. And the Lord said unto Ahijah. But, but I spoke for him. That's, that's right. For the eyes of the Lord, the Bible said, is 10,000 times brighter than the sun. That's right. I mean, he didn't need his eyes. God was able to see everything for him. In fact, God was able to see further. Because God can saw the king's heart and the wife's heart. That's right. Now look at the relationship between Ahijah and God. And the Lord said unto Ahijah. Look at it. I want, to, I want, to, I want you to notice their relationship. That's the right. The conversation between the creator and the creature. And the Lord said unto Ahijah. The Lord said to Ahijah. Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son. Yes. For he is sick. Uh -huh. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, where it shall be when she cometh in that she shall foreign herself. She's going to disguise herself. To, to be another woman. To be another woman. And it was so when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet. Wait a minute. He didn't even wait to see it. That's right. When he just heard what? When Ahijah heard the sound of her feet. Then what? As she came in at the door that he said, come in thou wife of Jeroboam. All right. But what the condition of his eyes? But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. But when he heard the feet of the woman that he couldn't see. As she come in at the door that he said, come in, thou come wife of Jeroboam. Come on in here, I know who you are. Why foreignest thou Your thyself wife to of be another? Je yeah. Your wife of Jeroboam, I know who you are. That's right. That's right. What you come here for? Come in. Uh -huh. Why foreignest thyself what to did be you disguise another? disguise yourself? to be someone else. Don't you know that God whom I represent know who you are? That's he right. know you're down setting, you're up rising. He know the intent of your heart and he know your thoughts are far off. That's right. That's why, that's why he know what sin you're going to commit and you ain't old enough to commit it yet. That's right. Amen. I often tell people when you repent, ask God to forgive you for your sins that you have done, that you're doing, and what he see you're going to do. Going to do. You know you're going to do something. <laughs> That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. The Bible said the very thought of foolishness is sin. Amen. If you think it, you've done something. Amen. If you dream it, you've done something. Amen. If you imagine it, you've done something. That's, right. That's why he said, let this mind be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. That's right. God want a dead mind, a dead body, a dead heart, a dead person. My Lord. That's why when he made Adam, the first stage that Adam was in was dead. That's right. That's what he wants out of us. Yes. A dead person. Dead. One that's dead to sin. Yes. And for us to be dead to sin, you got to have a murderer for a preacher. That's right. Got to have a murderer for a preacher. That's right. How are you going to murder you? The Bible says you're killed how often? All the day long. All the day long. All the day long. So rest assured you, when I'm coming in your area, I'm coming to kill you. <laughs> you're coming to kill. I love every last one of you, but God knows I'm coming to kill you. <laughs> Amen. I thank God for all of you, but I'm coming to murder you. That's right. I'm here in Atlanta to murder everything in town. That's right. To kill you. That's right. Because the seed is not quickened except to die. Except to die. For us to be quickened and make the resurrection, we must be killed and die first. That's right. Go back to the book of Thessalonica. Back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I don't even have two. time to get all what I want. I can take this to the evening sacrifice. Oh, yes. Listen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, now we're at verse 2. Uh -huh. That you be not soon shaken in mind. That you don't soon be shaken in mind. Or be troubled. So your mind needs to be sound. That's right. Sound. Sound. Don't think of yourself higher than what you are. No. Don't put yourself on no pinnacle. <laughs> That's right. And don't be quick to make vows. That's right. A lot of us think if we make a vow, that's going to make God move faster. You got it wrong. 
Now you put a yoke on yourself. That's right. Give me the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes. Now in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, now Don't go running two. around making a bunch of vows. Be not rash with thy mouth. The Bible says what? Be not rash with thy chapter mouth. Chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5 and verse 2. Don't be rash with your mouth, and nor let not thine heart be hasty. Don't allow your heart. To be in a hurry. To utter anything before God. Wait, wait, wait. Don't let what part of you do it. Thine heart. You see, a lot of stuff that you say is out of emotion. Right. You left the service all hyped <laughs> and guinea and happy and oh, you say, I'm going to And before you know it, you leave service and all in your car, hallelujah. <laughs> all the, on the way home, hallelujah. Sitting at the red light, hallelujah. Please pull you over from running in the rail You roll the window down. <laughs> License and registration, please. <laughs> and before you know it, he's calling. We got a 1021 here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he don't know what all that hot about a buy is. <laughs> yeah, we got That's a 1021 right. going on. Amen. Listen at this. Be not rash with thy mouth. Don't be rash with your mouth, nor let thine heart be hasty. Don't let your heart, your heart be in a hurry. To utter anything you see, before God. see, a lot God. of times we make quick vows, we make quick statements too fast. Yeah. Out of emotion. That's right. That's right. The word hit us and convict us. And we say, oh man, the word got me. Lord, I'm not going to do that ever again. Mm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Am I right, I said? Right. Yeah, the word of God come breaking up boyfriend and girlfriend. The word don't convict you. And you sitting there, oh, Lord. man, you know what? Mm -hmm. you, you call uh, Brother Peter. <laughs> Peter, who's this? This is Sister Martha. You know, that, that word that Pastor Jen has preached, whew, it just blew me out the water, you know. It, I can't do this no more. All right, I understand, I understand, I understand, all right. You know, so I'm not coming to see you no more. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> see him in church. Hi, Brother Peter. Hi, sister. How you doing? I'm all right. You hanging in there? Yeah, I'm hanging in there. Peter walk away, she's standing there looking. <laughs> Before you know, what? <laughs> That's right. Wait, what? <laughs> Pete, 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 wait a minute, Pete, don't, don't go so quiet, it was so fast. Wait, you ain't got to cut the conversation that short, Pete. Why didn't you? Mm -hmm. All right. And then Pete looking at you. Well, listen, you know, yeah, I think it's best that I step back. <laughs> You miss me, Pete? Uh -huh. <laughs> Am I right, I said? Amen. Serving God is not about hype. No, no. If you cannot be real and brutally honest with your own self, you're not fit to be honest with no one else. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Glory to God. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter. Don't let your heart be so in a hurry. To utter anything to say before anything God. anything before God. For God is in heaven. And thou upon earth. What should we do? Therefore let thy words be few. Read quick so I can finish. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. Yes. And a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. One thing about a fool, they hardly ever shut up. They always talk all over themselves until the Bible said a fool tell all his heart. That's right. The word of God said a fool is known how? By multitude of words. A dream come to the multitude of business. So every dream that you have about somebody being your husband and wife, don't be so quick to, you know, dump it on God. That's right. It is common to dream about him, her, or them. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. Because there's many brothers who don't talk to sisters, not verbally, but in their dream. Mm. And there are many sisters that have embraced some brothers, not physically, but they had a dream. They had a dream. That one day. <laughs> They will hold hands together. That's right. Yeah, Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. One day. 
Somebody say, well, Pastor Jennings, I'm married. Did you say something new? Amen. Give me the book of Jude quickly. Jude chapter 1 and at verse 8. Let me shut down the married folk who all, I'm, I'll shut up. <laughs> I ain't paying you no mind. I'm too real for that. Too real for that. The book of Jude, Jude? only got one chapter. Chapter 1. Just in case one. some of you want to scramble around and find it. it. It's right next to Revelation. Right. Just got one chapter. That's it. All right, Williams, come on. Jude chapter 1 and verse 8. What is it? Likewise also these filthy dreamers. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Amen. One thing about a dream, you can travel far. That's right. You can talk to a lot of people. You can be with a lot of people. That's right. Married, unmarried, folks you don't even know. That's Go true. to the islands. That's right. Amen. Go just do things. Do things that they're too scared to do or do things that they have done and don't want no one to know that it is done. That's right. That's why the dream come through the multitude of business, the subconscious mind. Yeah. You see, the imagination of the heart is far reaching. That's right. And most people have never act out what they really imagine. So that's part of their frustration. Because sometimes we want to bring to reality what we imagine. Because when you imagine, that takes time. Oh, yeah. And energy. That's right. And we be like, oh, man, I wish I can experience this. Yeah. I wish I thought I can do this. Or we see something that plant a thought in mind. And we're like, oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, why did I hear about that? Mm, praise him. That's right. Huh? That's right. So instead of being real with yourself, you've been taught to shout over it. Yep. Scream over it. Yeah. Shout it out. Run it out. That's right. But it ain't going nowhere. No. All right, listen to what I'm telling you. Amen. Listen at this. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers, Dirty dreamers defile the flesh. Devour the flesh. Despise dominion. And speak evil of dignities. So they say, I'm a virgin. That's wonderful. In what way? In what way? I ain't never touched no man. Beautiful. Thank God for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't have to touch him with your hands. No. You can touch him in your dreams. In your dreams. Yeah, you can come out mentally experienced, but physically inexperienced. Until when it comes time for your physical indulgence, you're a veteran. You know, right. every, you know everything to do. That's true. Because with the mind, you already experience. That's right. You know what you want, how you want it, how you want to distribute it. Mm. Go ahead. Go ahead. You see Boogaloo Man up there left. <laughs> Boogaloo Man. Boogaloo Man. <laughs> Go <laughs> ahead, brother. Amen. That's why I teach our brothers and sisters to be realistic. I don't care how much you speak in time. I don't care if you got so much Holy Ghost, you glow in the dark at night. That's true. That Bible is the most realist book in the world. That's right. And any man and woman who so soon shaken in mind. mind. You see, some of us are not spiritual. We're just an OD on the Bible. <laughs> That's right. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? You too spiritual. Too you don't ran past God. <laughs> That's right. You don't ran past the Bible. Go ahead, bro. Let me describe to you what I mean. And you can maybe be able to identify what I'm talking about. There are some people, brothers and sisters, and you heard me say this a many occasions, I don't care what type of conversation you have with them, you can't have a common sense conversation without somebody quoting the scripture That's or right. saying hallelujah yeah. or getting in the spirit. Hey, brother, how you doing? Hey, brother, I love, I'm, I'm coming along all right. The, the Lord is coming. I got to get myself together. The Bible said, no, you're not. The devil is running the race. Run off. Hold it. Oh, oh, oh. That's right. Over there, we're going to ask Brother Denny to bless the food. 
Lord Jesus, bless this food in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. <laughs> Lord, remember how you took them from the land of Egypt. Lord, remember how you, they, the, the, the rod of gold is turned to a serpent. Lord, remember how fire came from heaven. I ain't asked you all about that. <laughs> Man, bless my green so I can eat. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Over zealous. Over zealous. Over. Over zealous. You in the spirit in the beginning. The spirit stopped. That's but right. you still going. Beating up everybody, cutting them across their head, putting dents in their shoes. That's right. Tearing up their jacket. Spirit stopped, but you kept going. Yeah. All right. All right. That's right. Over zealous. Over zealous. All right. Over there, you see a big steel column. <laughs> you out there jumping, you know, you ain't got sense enough to open your eyes. I don't care how much anointing you got. That's right. That, that pole ain't going nowhere. You better open them eyes. <laughs> you better open them eyes. <laughs> you got that holy dance, you see that pole, just slide around. <laughs> <laughs> just slide around. You, that don't mean you're gonna lose your step. You can still keep that step, but just slide around. Or you're gonna ricochet off that pole, whatever spirit you got, coming right out. That's right. Over zealous. Over zealous. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. A lot of this is not taught in churches. No. So a lot of things become repetitious and habit. Right. Listen at the book of Jude. Jude 1 and verse 8. That's what? Likewise also these filthy Ye dreamers. These filthy dreamers. Defile the flesh. <coughs> despise dominion. And speak evil of dignities. Amen. So. How many. Have you commit fornication with? In your dreams. I've been faithful to my husband. I've been faithful to my wife. How many men or women you been with dreams. in your dreams? In your dreams. Oh. Amen. Let the church say. Let the church say. Let the church say. That's all you can do is say amen. That's it. That's right. You naive people that are not married who believe that when you get married, your husband or your wife is going to be the only ones that look good to you. Right. You a liar and a deceiver. That's right. For the other women of the world don't turn ugly because you got married. That's right. And the other men don't turn ugly because you got married. If they are ugly, they was already ugly before you got married. Are you listening? That's right. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost said. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Filthy dreamers. You hear that? Something. Bible make target practice. That's right. That's right. Make you gotta holler like Brother Bowser. Yeah. If you cannot be real with yourself, family, I know it sounds hard, but what it does, it makes one look at themselves. It doesn't matter because Paul was an apostle. That's right. Apostle Paul said, when I personalize it, when I would do good. Evil is present. He said evil is present. It's present. With and if me. Paul didn't think of himself mm. so high, then he came back again. He said, oh, wretched man. That I am. That I am. Who shall deliver me? Who shall be able to deliver me? From the body of this death. You know what this death we was talking about? 
His sin. sin. The sting of death is what? Sin. When you get over there, you something say, you know, since I received the Holy Ghost, I don't know how to cuss. Why don't you stop that line? <laughs> you don't know how? You don't know how. You may not do it. <laughs> right. You know how. That's right. That's why sometimes you got to catch yourself when you get angry. What you say to me? Why you? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> How could I fix my mouth? Very easy. Very easy. <laughs> Why? Out of the abundance of the heart. Of the heart. Mouth speaking. Mouth speaking. That's right. You know how to do it. You know how to do it. You know how to do it. That's why you be talking all that smack when you with that woman. That's right. Saying everything. That's right. Making the atmosphere more formidable. Yeah. That's saying, that's that's saying everything. That's calling her everything. And she agreeing right with you. What did you call me? <laughs> Talking that talk, walking that walk, and doing that thing. <laughs> that's right. Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost has. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile you the flesh. folk ain't never heard this kind of preaching. This is the kind of preaching that folks be thinking about in your in a subconscious mind or private away from private. everybody or have these kind of uh, conversation with certain ones yeah. where they can just be themselves with. That's right. And we come along and deal with all these matters. That's right. All of them. All right, listen. Amen. Just take the shades off your eyes. Yes, it does. Make you see yourself closer or in some cases make you admit what you are. That's right. A dirty, filthy, nasty thing. That's right. And some love to be dirty. Some love it. Yeah. Love to be filthy. Oh, yeah. And they get joy out of being nasty. That's right. <laughs> Am I right, I said? That's right. That's you right. know, some don't want to say amen because they don't want to give themselves away. <laughs> but you're... <laughs> Your eyes are the light of your body. That's right. Already God folks will marvel what I see in some people. I remember one sister years ago came and talked to me. She had a conference scheduled and uh, she came in my office and had her shades on. I said, sister, you can take your glasses off. She said, oh, no, I don't want to. The first time I ever experienced that. I said, why? She said, because uh, I don't want you to see what's in me. I said, do you really think your shades can keep me from seeing what's in you? That's right. She said, but the Bible said your eyes are the light of the body. I said, that's right. And you think that's the only thing they shine? Yeah. I said, you can't put shades over your heart. That's right. That's right. When I said that, she dropped the shades and looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's close out. Let's go back to the book of Thessalonians. Everybody all right? Yeah. Back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 2. Yes. That you be not soon shaken in mind. Let's get some soundness. Let's get some stability. Yes. Drink the word of God and live. That's it. Take your time and apply it to yourself so you can develop in God, grow in God. Don't lie to yourself about yourself. Yeah. And don't be quick to give people your personal business. That's right. Don't put your personal business all on social media. Yeah. If your web page ain't clean, clean it up or take it down. Amen. 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 Holy Ghost, don't behave itself unseemly. That's right. He's a God of order. That's right. Amen. When I go in a restaurant and eat, I'm going to eat. The Lord ain't going to have me running around all around the restaurant, around. knocking over trees and all that stuff. That's all. There's a time for all, all things. That's right. If that, that, this comes to my mind. Give me the third chapter of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. And, uh, and uh, wait a minute. Before you read that, give yes. me Corinthians. You walking around in some restaurant yelling, speaking in tongues, much you in the spirit, forced to look at you and think you mad. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, how, how can you say that? Let's get some Bible for this. In the book of 1 yeah, Corinthians. Not only do they think you're mad, they think you're a barbarian. That's right. Follow me and hear me. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 23. Uh -huh. If therefore the whole church become together into one place. If the whole church come together in one place. And all speak with tongues. Everybody speaking in tongues. And there come in those that are unlearned. Come in those that are unlearned. Or unbelievers. Or unbelievers. Will they not say that ye are mad? That's right. You didn't know that was in there, did you? <laughs> Amen. That's the book. You in a restaurant and get ready to eat. Sit down. That's right. 
the Holy Ghost got you running all around, disturbing all people, arresting around. And the Bible said God is not the author of confusion. Of confusion. You see, I don't believe nothing but the Bible. <laughs> and right. I don't believe in the Holy Ghost conducting himself in a manner that contradicts the Bible. Right. That's right. There's a time and a season for everything. Everything. In the book of everything. That's right. Bible said, if everybody see you and the believers look at you, they say you're mad. Will they not say that you're mad? Will they not mad? say you're mad? And, but if all prophesy, if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, what? He is convinced of all. He is judged of Why? all. Why? Because they come in their language. That's right. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You come in my house. I invite you for dinner. I invite you to eat. Not for church. Amen. When I'm sitting at the table eating. Don't come quoting to me no scripture. Don't bring me Paul. I That's got right. yams on my plate. Don't bring me Paul. <laughs> Listen, I'm your brother and I'm your overseer, but I'm not a spiritual hype man. No, you're not. A lot of folk don't know me. That's right. Brothers that have been around me and know me know I'm a very down to earth person. I don't walk around 24 hours a day talk about Peter, Paul, and James. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right, listen. Amen. I got other business to take in. Yeah. I know so many of us brothers, the brothers travel with me, they know we just didn't have a rap session. That's all. Don't go try to act like you're spiritual. You're going to talk to me about the Bible 24 hours a day, and you know you really ain't like that. <laughs> just be real. That's right. You know you ain't like that. Amen. <laughs> eh? Amen. Don't be righteous over much. Over much. That's, that's, that's when your mind is shaken. Yeah. yeah. Take your time and be sound. That's right. Stop thinking holiness is when you're walking around. Some folks think it's so holy, can't even smile. That's right. One of the most gloomiest things you've ever seen. <laughs> you think it's a sin to smile. Right. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Amen. They think being holy is just walking around and down and gloom and... Uh, Fast three days and three nights every week. Every really? Week. You got to run at a pace where you will survive. That's right. Fast in three days and three nights every week, someone going to soon put you where nobody can see you. <laughs> Your face going to start favoring a pecan. <laughs> Somebody going to mistake you for a coat rack. You come and hold this over Zaya. Oh, man, I heard the Pastor Jennings fast seven days and seven nights. I want to do that. Wanna Why? That's right. Why? The Lord led me to do it. Right. He led me to do it several times. He led me to go 12 days and 12 nights on few occasions. Mm. I didn't do that of myself. <laughs> but I want to walk around. Yeah, when I first did it, I was 140 pounds. And I think when I came off that seven day fast, I was about 90. Mm. You can see the bones protruding from my back. But I did it right. You don't hear someone else's testimony and you become so inspired, you want to try it. That's right. I read about the Lord fast 40 days and 40 nights. And Moses, yeah. bless them both. <laughs> That's my answer. That's right. Moses and Jesus, That's they're right. 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. Thank God for Moses. Thank God for, Thank God for Jesus. I ain't trying it no, no. unless the Lord lead me. Yeah. And I'm going to be sure he lead me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Jennings! I want you to fast 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> Amen. Jennings! I want you to fast for, oh yeah, I'm going to try that stuff. That's right. And I got Bible right to try. That's right. Gideon tried God. To see where he get the battle. He took that fleece out there and said, all right, you, if you say I've got this battle, I want this fleece wet with dew and around the dry. He came back. It was so. Yeah, 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 once ain't good enough for me. I want this fleece dry and around it wet. He came back. It was so. He said, all right, I'm all right now. All right. I know I got the battle. That's right. You talk about 40 days and 40 nights without eating, mm. you can die. Oh, yeah. But if you do it right, by the leading of God, you can live. You can live. That's right. So take your time. I don't care how inspired you are. Are you listening to the old man? Wonderful, wonderful. Take your time. That's right. 
Get off your hype horse. Lay aside your mag wheels. Tune down your exhaust. Down. Disconnect your four cylinders, or rather your 12 cylinders. Oh, yeah. That's right. Get off your motorcycle. Just get on a bike. Yeah. Pedal slow. Slow. Don't even have your gears high on that. <laughs> Fast and pray at a pace. Don't look at no one else. That's right. I mean nobody. Amen. Just take your time. You have to know what worked for you. Yeah. I fast seven days and seven nights because God let me. Yeah. Williams ain't come to me not once and say he's doing it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> not once. Not once. And he was with me. The whole time God led me to do it, he saw me. Oh, yeah. I had more strength in the seventh day. Yeah. Over to God than I did on the fourth or fifth day. That's right. When I fast 12 days and 12 nights, no food, no water. My eyeballs ached. Mm. My body cramped. You ever had a Charlie horse? Imagine your entire body feeling like a Charlie horse. And worse than that. Because you are uh, not eating, no, you don't have no nourishment, and you're dehydrated. I prayed, hallelujah, I prayed every hour. Every time that clock hit an hour, bam, I was praying, talking to God. Wonderful, wonderful. I didn't know why God was leading me when I was young to fast like that. But I know now. Oh, yes. It, it's, it's paying off now. Oh, yes. Amen. But I wait. And let God lead. If God don't lead, I'm eating. <laughs> That's right. Don't be so soon shaking in mind. That's right. Nor be trouble. Neither by spirit. Neither by spirit. Spirit. Nor don't let your spirit trouble you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get around a person that got the wrong spirit. Right. Don't be troubled by spirit. Nor by word. When you hear the word of God preach. What else? Nor by letter as from us. Nor by letter as from us. But as, what? As that the day of Christ is at hand. And? Let no man deceive you by any means. Do you hear this? Amen. Don't let no one trick you. By any means. So you got to take your time and learn and be watchful and be mindful. That's right. Don't let no one deceive you in any form. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. The Lord ain't going to come until... A uh, falling away take place. That means many that's walking with God now, right. many of them are going to leave him. That's right. That's right. Word. And he's just prolonging his coming, his arrival. Yes. Because that scripture got to be fulfilled. Right. Many that are baptized, many have the Holy Ghost, have left the Lord yes. through the years. He said it's going to be a great falling away. Falling away. And if you take note of both, both places in eternity, Heaven and hell. New Jerusalem and eternal hell. Hell got renovated. That's right. The Bible said hell hath enlarged herself. That means it got bigger. Got bigger. Which shows us they're going to be more lost than saved. That's right. New Jerusalem, that's made the, the holy city. Those measurements never change. Never change. You see, the city lie at four square. Four square. Yes, the length the breadth and the height thereof are equal. 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 One part, 144 cubits. Another part, 12,000 furlongs. The city had no need of the light of the sun nor of the moon. For the prophet said, the Lord did light up city. the city. Uh, there was 12 gates, with the name of the 12 apostles. So the New Jerusalem didn't change in measurements at all, establishing the fact a few going to be saved. That's right. Even though that few is a number that no man can number. But in God's eyes, compared to those that's going to be lost. Just a few going to be saved. So take your time and drink. Be stable. Be sound. You that is in these false churches that's listening and watching this message, come out of them now. That's right. You preachers, come on out the Baptist pulpit, the Pentecostal pulpit, the so-called apples with stolics in the non-denominational. Come out of the religions that promote bigotry and racism and all this religious trash that got you thinking right here is heaven. If right here was heaven, I wouldn't want it. That's right. 
No, if right here was heaven, I wouldn't want it. No. Now, if right here was hell. Oh, yes. I take it. That's right. I mean, if, right if, if, if hell was just he, this, like this, yeah. you know, snow once in a while, rain. <laughs> Amen. Get cold, you know. Get behind on your mortgage once in a while. That's right. Catch up, work some overtime. Yeah. You know, I can deal with that. But yeah. falling... And the everlasting flame throughout eternity. The Lord. And the Lord take my body that I now have and fix it and make it eternal. Yes. Where I never burn up. Mm. The apostle said where the worm don't die. That's us, the worm. Yeah. And the fire shall never be quenched. And every sin that we never repented for, yes. we're going to remember Amen. while we're falling and never hit a bottom. That's right. And you won't be able to repent for it. That's right. Never be too proud or too arrogant to repent for That's anything. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling Amen. you? Amen. Amen. You know, the scripture talk about confess your fault one to the other. And the bishops have said that means to come before the church and tell everybody what you've done. But you don't find the apostles doing that. No. No. It isn't wise to get up and go telling everybody what you've done. Somebody may try to pray on you. That's right. And there's some people, I don't care how much repentance you've done, they will never, they will never look at the fact you changed. That's right. But yet they don't want you to, you to look at them the same way. That's why I tell the folk, don't let nobody come run somebody's name down to you. You want to know anything about them? Learn them for yourself. You don't want to learn them for yourself? Mind your business. Amen. Amen. I've been thrown under the bus so much until I'm used to the tire marks. And it came from brothers. Thought, thought if they just take my name and taint it and destroy it and try to ruin it and Everything. They thought they can destroy the church and all that. I done been through all that already. That's right. That's why a lot of these preachers are so frustrated because now things are much bigger than it ever was. Yeah. And everything they try, God block it. Yes. Some people ask me, don't you get tired of them? I tell them, no. I, most of these men, I don't even remember they exist. <laughs> Amen. Unless someone mentioned their name, but their name is insignificant to us. <laughs> That's right. We believe what's written, and we are focused on what's written. That's right. Give me a few more verses so I can quit, and then we'll get Acts 38. That you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit. And what? Nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. Uh -huh. As that the day of Christ is in hand. Yes. That no man deceive you by any means. That nobody trick you in any manner. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. You don't want to be in that. Oh, no. no. I'd rather be weaker. Hear me well. I'd rather be weaker than the weakest child of God on the planet, right. whoever he or she may be. I bet I'd rather be weaker than them yeah. than leave God. Amen. If your brother or sister fall in any form of transgression, don't you look down on them. That's right. And don't you go slandering them and throwing them on social media right. like a fool. You know, some folk got all their personal business on social media, you infidel. Amen. They don't have no shame in their game at all. At all. Or open fool. <laughs> That's right. You know, if you're really a fool, you should be an undercover fool. <laughs> don't, public, don't publicize to everybody how stupid you are. That's right. You know, don't let everybody know. If you trust someone, you tell them, hey, what's wrong, I'm stupid. <laughs> you what? I'm stupid. Don't tell nobody. You know, undercover stupid. Undercover. When you're around folk, be intelligent. Don't let no one know how nutty you are. Some of us is a bold fool. Bold. And then we think we're proving something. You're proving that you're careless. Don't advertise your stupidity. That's right. Don't advertise your arrogance. Yep. 
Listen. Let no man deceive you by any means. What is it? For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The son of perdition. perdition. That old Antichrist. That's right. One false prophet said the Lord told him that I'm the Antichrist. Then in false, the same false prophet said the Lord told him that I'm going to lead people to the Antichrist. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a real hateful passage, isn't it? That just, they just have to lie. Yeah. I'm going to lead people to the Antichrist. He said the Lord told him that I'm supposed to be in a white limousine Cadillac with about seven or eight homosexuals. The Lord told him. My Lord. The Lord ain't told him nothing no more than I smoke weed or I'm the neighborhood crack man. <laughs> that was just a straight up lie. That just a That's lie. what hater do to you. Yeah. Amen. But out of all that, we're focused. And that's why the Lord is blessing the church. That's right. There's, there's so many new temples that's being purchased and temples still being worked on. I thank Brother Nars, uh, the brother who's heading the project on the new church of Monroe, Louisiana. He, he, he contacted me. I said, well, you go ahead and head the project. They went through the new church and. Ripped the carpet up. The church is on a slab of concrete. The cat concrete was split. He showed me. I said, well, you go on and contact the company. It's in your hands. You do what you got to do. He said, I'm going to rip it up. I said, rip it up. Rip it out. He sent the pictures. They ripped everything out and put down the rebar and the steel and got wonderful. the concrete down. The, the whole floor is done. Wonderful. wonderful. That's wonderful. Don't mind working. People ask us to open up these churches. Well... You got to be willing to work. Yeah. Amen. The Bible said they had a mind to work. And, and, and we're working too, brother. We are working. Oh, yes. Amen. So I'm glad for the brothers and sisters that's not lazy. Yeah. Well, thank you, brother Joe. Good work. We, we, we're trying to do a good work. I, 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 I want to be like the prophet. I believe it was Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Yeah. He said, I'm doing a good work and I'm not coming down. That's right. And by will God be my helper, even though they try to pull us down and tear us down. Uh, I want to say to you preachers who try to pull us down, you're so weak, I don't even feel you tugging. <laughs> Amen. I don't feel you tugging. I look back, I think of some, some little child on my jacket or something. That's right. I don't feel you tugging. Your hands is too little. That's right. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go I'm focused. I, I'm just keep working. That's right. Keep working. Amen. Because God has sent us to do this and he taught me how to do it. Amen. Not only did he teach me how to do it, he showed me what pace. Wonderful. Glory to God to do it in. Wonderful. And then he let me know that I give you victory everywhere. everywhere. Williams, we got victory everywhere. Oh, yes. Everywhere. Amen. Everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everywhere. Everywhere. You know, that's something to say and, and it be true. Be true. Yeah. Amen. I don't have to second guess. I don't have to wonder at all. Sometimes Williams would tease me. He said, well, this is our first time going here. <laughs> you think we're going to have victory? I just look at him. I said, no, I don't think it. I know it. Know it. The victory is ours before we go there. That's right. So Atlanta, you come on now. That's right. And the truth of God station here and Park your car, come out of your churches. God willing, we want to open up in Macon, Georgia. I want to open up in Valdosta, Georgia. Amen. Amen. I want to get all through these areas and just crush the state of Georgia. Amen. Just crush it. Just crush it. Amen. Amen. Not only Georgia's on the map, but every city, every country, every state. And God has given us victory everywhere. everywhere. And that's why this, it, it calls us to work harder. Work harder. It's not like we, got, we go somewhere and got to go about 50 times before we get 30 people. No. When we go one time, we have an instant congregation like coffee. That's right. It's the power of the gospel. That's right. I want to say you're bragging about yourself. No, I'm boasting in the God that I have. That's right. I have a real God. Hallelujah. I have a real God. Yeah. Amen. So, Washington, D.C., don't worry, we're coming. Yeah, I heard you. And also the island of St. Lucia. I greet all the brothers and sisters of First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ on the island of St. Lucia. We'll be there 
with Pastor Richards and everybody else. So uh, we'll be in Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, throughout California, uh, in uh, North Dakota, South Dakota. They just want it everywhere. Every, and I don't have enough men. I don't even have enough men to put in the churches. That's right. Hey Amen. It's just that's the truth of it. I don't even have enough men. I need humble, sincere men that's more eager to listen yeah. than to go out there and stand behind a block of wood yelling. <laughs> Amen. If you're more eager to stand behind a block of wood yelling than you are listening, you ain't going to know what to tell them. That's right. And if God going to tell you everything, you don't need a leader. Right. No, you get these type of men, they hear God's voice 24-7. Lay down, God whispering to them. That's right. Wake up. Can't eat. Can't even eat at the table in the spirit. Fork, fork in one hand, knife in the other. Chicken just missing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You come around Pastor Jennings a while. You'll learn something. That's, that's right. Am I right, William? That's right. Williams will tell you, oh, yeah. man, when he started, he was, you talking about the hype? Oh, my Lord. Mm. It was possible to light a match at the bottom of his hill, rocket fuel. He would <laughs> go up like a firework. Oh, no. It took Williams a long time to come down, man. That's right. Hey, I mean, just simple reading. Oh, you know yeah. how he read at his regular tone now? <laughs> when Williams got started, he thought he lost his mind. Standing, standing next to me just like this. That's right. And I would tell him, all right, uh, I may call a chapter in a verse, so he may get something. I'd be like, all right, read. Da, da, da. I mean, he was yelling. Hell, in the basement, Pastor. And we was only in the basement. In the basement. If I had long hair, that stuff would have been blowing back from him. <laughs> Amen. Yelling. Took a long time, man. Oh, I, had man. To, I had to start pulling plugs and wires. <laughs> Amen. So you can't run. <laughs> you can't run this race all hyped up. No. It's too real. Yeah. When you hype, this is what God wisdom will do. He'll give the devil permission. Yeah. And give the devil an invitation to step in your life. Yeah. To bring an experience. To slap you back to reality. That's right. You'll realize you're not as strong as you thought. Yeah. You wasn't on that uh, plateau that you thought you was. Right. There's no shame to find that out. That's right. You should want to know where you really are in God and where you are not. Right. Then to walk around and fake it. That's right. That's right. Please don't think you're strong because you speak in tongue a lot. Mm -mm. Your strength ain't based upon a tongue. No. Doesn't matter if you jerking all the time. You know, some folk never be still. <laughs> Amen. Never be still. Amen. They got me beat, Pastor. Yeah, they got you beat. And that's a lot. Amen. It is a lot. <laughs> but sometimes I get tired when the Lord get on you, I get tired. <laughs> Where the Lord deal with him, I, I'm glad he don't deal with me that way. Amen. Sometimes when man the Lord dealt with him, his nostril be open, and he still be trying to read at his last breath. <laughs> and then I meet some, you know, we just having a conversation, and you know, they, you know, I'm holding their hand, talking to him. How you feeling, brother? Pastor Jim. <laughs> I almost thank you some China. <laughs> Let's keep bowing. Amen. Sometimes I just look at him. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I'm telling Williams asked me, he said, I don't know how you keep a straight face. <laughs> I told him, sometime I do, sometime. <laughs> and then sometime I guess look at them and, you know, don't mean no harm, but I may laugh right in their face. <laughs> sometimes I just can't help it. I'm a very down to earth person. So oh, some man. of you think I'm mean, I'm not. Right. I'm a pretty good fellow who <laughs> sent to slap you over with the Bible. Amen. That's all. Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, you that's here in the overflow or in the tent. Amen. Get ready to give yourself right for water baptism. That's right. The 
Holy Ghost said. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. You gotta be sorry about your sins. Repent and be baptized. How much? Every one of you. How much? In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All of Ghost. you that want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet if you want it. Amen. Come on to the front. Now, let me say this. All the men that want to be baptized, you go to the tent. You lead them to the tent. All the women that want to be baptized, you go right to the back. Just follow those sisters and they'll lead you to the back. All the men, all men that's standing in the tent or the overflow, you that's in the tent, stay in the tent if you're a man. You that are sisters that want to be baptized, you come on out and uh, you come on in here and they get you together in here. That's a good thing. Amen. Amen. Come on and give your life to God and get ready. Amen. You might as well. Amen. You might as well. That's right. Then Peter. Then Peter said unto them, repent. You that are watching, you might as well just quit. Stop fighting this because fighting this is like uh, Nat went to fight an elephant and got sucked up in the nostrils of the elephant so fast he, didn't, he forgot where he was at. <laughs> That's right. You will never be able to fight this. No, no. And when? Then Peter, then, said, Peter, then Peter said unto them, repent. He didn't say bow your head and raise your hands. He didn't say join the church. He didn't say pray a sinner's prayer. Peter ain't said none of that. No. He wants you to be convicted in your heart for your devilment. That's right. Repent. And be baptized every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. Remission of sins means to get your sins removed or washed away. And what did he promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, Ghost. viewers, that's what it is when he told Nicodemus, be born of the warmth of the Spirit. You have been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? You're not baptized. You just got wet. Your pastor, your bishop, your so-called apostle, your fake prophet, your half-pint deacon, the missionary staff, everybody. Everybody. Including the Pope of Rome and every archbishop. That's right. And every altar boy. Yeah. Amen. You was baptized, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You just got wet. That's right. Who? Everybody. Everybody. Ain't none of you saved. Yeah. Until you do it like the Apostle Peter preached it on the day of Pentecost. Okay. All right. May God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, what time did the evening session start? 5.30? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? Oh, I'll give you another 30 minutes because it's 3.23 now. Well, come on back at 5.30. Come on back at 5.30 and we'll have prayer from 5.30 to 6. Amen. That way we'll make some alterations and uh, close this dedication out. God be our helper. Let us all stand. We're going to ask uh, Elder English to close us out in prayer.